Hey, Rock and Roll Nation, you're listening to Pod of Thunder, the only podcast that lets cunty moochers and rock and roll boners mingle. Welcome to Pot of Thunder, the recognized symbol of excellence in rock and roll podcasting, brought to you by Blue Microphones. They look great, they sound even better, and thank you to Alex Sandell for today's intro. Guys, it's a big day. Here we are. You know who it is. It's America's little brother. It's your buddy, Andy. And as always, I am here with the one, the only, the Garlic Dragon. Mm. Bam! Bam! There's Gnarly Nick. What's going on? Ugh. So you've got your uh, Detroit Red Wings <laughs> Zubaz pants on today. I do, because we're recording later than normal. I was not going to take my pajamas off just to put them back on again. I respect that. No offense to anybody here. I don't think anybody Or anybody it. listening. So you'll be wearing those straight into the, into the sack tonight? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So the go-to pants, huh? Yeah, the, the top two. What is that? A yellow? No, nah, just a t-shirt. That's coming off. I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> be strutting around. Okay, the place. so you you're, you sleep stripped to the waist? Is that what you're saying? Doesn't everybody? Doesn't I don't. everybody go Yule Brenner? No, <laughs> is that what that's called? <laughs> Classic Yule Brenner. <laughs> no, not me. Puffing your chest out, strutting around in your loose, loose fitting uh, pajama pants and no shirt. I'm a what, white V-neck T-shirt guy, plus whatever uh, whatever works uh, from the bot for the bottom half. Whatever works, yeah, either temperature-wise you know, or what? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, boxers or long, long uh, lounge pant type deal. But L- lounge pants, what a choice of a bastard, random son of a bitch, typical run-of-the-mill. All right. Man, I worked in the industry. That's what we called them in the Playboy catalog. Yeah. That whole loungewear section. <laughs> it's a proper moniker for that type of thing. Oh, it is. It is. It is. I just had to squeeze your clip in somehow. And I, I mean, did I, it successfully. I guess technically they're pajama pants, but lounge pants just sound so much better. It sounds like there's more than going to bed happening. Well, sure, yeah. Like you might be... Like reading. Sure, but you might be entertaining... No, I, I, I think you're confusing that with like the the whole uh, smoking jacket, silk pajamas. Yeah, sure, look. maybe so. Yeah, I mean, it's like Nick says. It's you just here's here's the deal. The first thing I do when I get home from work, straight up to the bedroom and get out of my pants yeah. and put on something more loungy. Do, no, don't hang around the house in your jeans. You guys don't sleep in your jeans. No, no. I, I don't even sit down at the kitchen table. With yeah, I don't either. Exactly. Do they? Do you even keep them on till you get upstairs? <laughs> well, I, they're they? not completely off by the time I get you're not, to the bedroom. You're not but carrying I'm, them I'm, up the I, stairs. I'm in the process of removing them yeah. by the time I get up there. Undoing yeah. the belt. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Yeah. It's the only you, way you don't to go. sit down in the pants you wore all day after you get home from work. It's just simply not done. No. I agree. <laughs> That's what? why it's called it's loungewear. That's what you do. You lounge around, you relax. It's like I was just thinking about that today, some unrelated conversation, but it's like you watch those shows like Leave It to Beaver and Ward Cleaver's <laughs> hanging around in a shirt and tie. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. How is that ever a thing? And like going to baseball games, or they're, they're wearing shirts oh, and yeah. ties in the dead of summer? Are you kidding me? I think that's the only thing people wore then, though. Yeah. I don't think I mean, other types I mean, that, of clothing well, that's, existed. That's like, we're talking like over 100 years ago, you see the baseball yeah. pictures. Yeah. 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 That's, I mean, the. That's back in the days where people were sitting on the foul line too, on the field. Mm, Everybody yeah. had their su- their suits on. Everybody looked exactly the same too. Yeah, they and had I mean, one suit available to them. I'm a, I'm, I'm a proponent of not being a slob, but there's the other extreme. Mm-hmm. So I think you know you got to find that middle ground. 
Mm-hmm. But yeah, you don't you don't hang around relaxing after work and like proper clothing. I mean, that's just where you run into trouble. You know, present company accepted tonight is when you leave the house with that stuff. On. Oh, I have the worst outfit in history. But right I can now. understand. I, I don't care. Stance. <laughs> and you have a, is it a brown or purple? It's like burgundy brown. or brown? brown? Brown hoodie. No, it's a, let's not get fancy with this outfit. It's, <laughs> let's let's not get into the expanded, the 64 uh, pack of crayons. <laughs> this, is, this is part of the eight pack. That's All the, the two pack you get at a restaurant. <laughs> Yeah, the IHOP kids menu. Yeah. The yeah. waxy ones that don't really write very well. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I respect your choice. Well, I like to see some yeah, color sure. every now and again. I didn't, I didn't leave the house thinking I was going to be respected. But, uh, <laughs> well, I plus, never you, were, you, were, you were going from the house to the car. To another house, right? Door to door in here. It's, yeah. You're basically lounging behind the wheel, so that's yeah. somewhat ex- acceptable. Mm-hmm. And you know it, it's acceptable for walking up to the pizza portal at Little Caesars and getting what you need. That's now, about if it. If you're gonna stop yeah. into the bank or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> we're, we're crossing the line. But you're better off just taking your pants off. You'd be more respected. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or you'd be feared at yeah, least. The the, uh, the basketball style tear away pants. You just rip them <laughs> off. Yeah. Through the crotch. Wait till it's your turn in line, and then when they call on you, you just tear your pants off and walk up to the teller. Play a song on your phone. Leave them in the pants and throw the phone and the pants off to the side. It's like the curtain at the beginning of a concert that falls straight down and then goes straight up, you yeah. know, disappears up into the rafters. That's the trajectory of your pants. Uh, what does the bank care Mm. Yeah, what do they care? I don't know why point? you have to show them respect. No, no, they've got your money. That's true. They're well, showing who, you respect. Plus, who deals with a teller anyway anymore? Yeah, that's true. Which is the way they want it, and quite frankly, I'm. It's kind of how I want it too. Don't want to deal my with money. people. Fill out a, a withdrawal slip to get your money. Get out of here, Nick. Do you do a lot of in-person banking? Not much. No, no. I was curious. Thought maybe you did. Uh-huh. No, can't say that I do. But yeah. uh, I, I've noticed, at least around here, you can't even uh, do drive up anymore. Some, what? In some of these banks, they just have an ATM or they, what? You have to go into the lobby. Well, ATM. I've not you, seen these there banks. Are co- there's a couple of them. That, They've gotten rid of the tube thing. The yeah, air, the yeah. I mean, tube. it's it's still there, but they don't even have it open to you. I, I don't know if I've ever seen there's a, that. There's a couple branches that I've been to that have done that. Maybe it's just they see you coming and they close up shop. <laughs> they want me to come inside. Yeah. <laughs> and they want to see your pants. <laughs> Actually, they'd rather you not came to the location at all. They're just trying to they figure, ease you out. They figure if I don't put on proper pants, I'm probably not going to get out of my car and walk in anywhere. Exactly. Or they're taking bets on which pants you're going to wear that day. <laughs> At least they know you don't have a gun hidden in there. It's one way to feel better about the transaction. Feels well, you could. I mean, you really can kind of see through these pants. So, yeah. Okay, well, that's uh, that's yeah. it's a little TMI. It's, it's pretty much airport security yeah, when uh, I walk into anywhere. With that these. just assured everyone that I won't be looking in that direction <laughs> for the rest of the episode. Here, I, I do want you to see this though. Yeah, I, that was that was okay, so that yeah. was sewn on. These are customs. It was oh, not so bought, that was not bought that way. Oh, not, not purchased yeah. that way. I love how the customize uh, your zubas. I love how the the tips of the wings are pointing at your groin <laughs> versus the other way around. Uh, Detroit Red Wings strategically struggle. placed leads the eye in that direction. <laughs> so you're wearing see through pants in a twenty yeah. something degree evening. Well, there you can kind of see through them. There, it's well, but if e- even kind of, it might not be a thick enough fabric for this temperature. <laughs> but again, Maybe you're going not. straight into the car, yeah. door to door, all good. <laughs> At least you're not wearing shorts, like I'm sure plenty of people are wearing oh, yeah. tonight. We've talked about this. Shorts and flip flops. Shorts. Yeah, yeah, while they're pumping Slides. their gas when it's eighteen degrees outside, it's like get I, fucking dressed, you it's, asshole. It's typically <laughs> I typically see it walking into like a Target. 
yeah I'll see, I'll see someone wearing that kind of thing and it's no coat or no. sometimes just a hoodie yeah hoodie shorts flip-flops and, yeah and yeah. then they're they're good i guess and these are the same assholes who go bankrupt because they can't pay their medical bills <laughs> catch pneumonia <laughs> And complain that, you know, it's not their fault. Okay. Dragging the rest of us down. Put on some pants. <laughs> I remember from a few years ago that that upset a few listeners. They were mad about that rant? <laughs> I think so. I think there were a few people who were like, well, you like tell Chris, I don't have, I don't have to put on pants. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Nobody, look, yeah, right. <laughs> Like I'm actually giving people <laughs> orders and expecting them to follow them, you know. No, but I just, I just, you. I enjoyed the uh, indignance that was yeah, that well, was coming in. I'll give you a yeah, right, you, Chris. Don't but tell me what's the to world do. we live in. You Guess know? what, Chris? I'm wearing shorts. Do what I want. Living yeah. life my way. Yeah. Well, go no for pants. it. Just make sure you can pay your fucking medical bills. Don't stick the rest of us with it. <laughs> All right, so back to the task at hand. Mm. It's Chris's turn to choose something from the listener submission list, and we will pull a random number here. Now, before we get started, I'm going to give something a trial run here. I don't know if Mm. Nick picked up on it, but Andy was engaged in this. Uh, I'm going to give a test spin to the Chris Brown rule here tonight. Oh, wow. You know what that is? I, I did see it on Facebook. It's mm-hmm. actually a pretty good idea. I like the Chris Brown You don't Brown typically rule. get good ideas from drummers, but here here we have one. <laughs> Chris Mark Brown is, down. is one of my very best friends in the world. I was the best man at his wedding. Oh, wow. He's uh, played drums and couple of my original bands including my first one in college and he suggested after last week's uh what half a dozen bushwicks something like that i edited two out from the final program oh okay. that's how many All there right. were well <laughs> right and to to, it's to warrant editing on this show is is an extreme measure. it almost never happens right. So Chris Brown suggested that we uh, put a limit of two Bushwicks on each uh, selection process. So that means that if you reject the first song, you get to the second song and it's not your liking, you have to decide, do I reject this and risk getting an even worse song yeah. on my final uh, shot, or do I go f- go forward with this? One? You know what? The, you know what that is? That's the white elephant game. Oh, really? Yeah. Same rule. Same rule. You got something? Okay, I don't. It's it's ridiculous. I can. Oh, you can do trade. Tra- I can or trade steal it or whatever. Or, yeah, I can trade it or take my chances. All right, so we'll do Chris Brown's White Elephant. <laughs> you want to try it today? It, I'm going to give it a All test right. run. Here we know. go. Um, let me saunter on over there. It's going to be... Well, quickly, let me um, get the uh, number here. We're going to pull a random Hold number. On. Let me get, get this gear off. Stand by. Let's go over to the Bozo Pewter. It's... <laughs> 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 Now, was the, where did where did you get that one? Is that Bob Bell? Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. So 1682, Chris. You see okay, it? Yeah, that's a big yes. Oh, a wow. big yes. And again, following... Wait, what was last week's song? I, Lover Boy. Lover Boy. Okay, that was only on once. But the previous two episodes, we had uh, dub, multiple submissions for the same song. This is a double submission oh, as well. all right. Ooh. All right, so... No need for the Chris Brown rule today. Yeah, and you guys are welcome to adhere to it or not, but I think I'm going to use that as the the basis for my selections so, moving forward. It's a little frightening, a little titillating, however. It does put some intrigue if you're not in the situation that we are tonight where you instantly pick the first uh-huh. one. You have a decision to make with the second one, so I, I kind of like it. This is exciting. All right. Would you like me to read the thing? Yeah, please do. I, I'm not hip to okay. all of the information. Mm. But. Right. Well, let's turn the microphone over to Chris Jericho to announce this week's song to Nick, who doesn't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Harold. 
This one's called... Animal. Off of... Wasp. <laughs> by the band... Wasp. Okay, so he, he, oh. he left out the parenthetical <laughs> I did. Bit. I did for today. But you know uh, it as animal, in parentheses, well, fuck like a beast. So I was thinking, you said animal, I'm like, okay. I wanted to De- leave some Def intrigue. Def Leppard or Wasp. Okay, so that was your end game. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I can get on board. Yeah, a little, just a, a couple more seconds of suspense for Nick. Well, and plus, the, I, I don't, I'm don't. i sure I don't know all the songs called Animal that could be on this list. So mm-hmm. I, I wasn't, uh, I was waiting for the uh, band. So this is the opening track to their debut album. What a way to kick off a career. <laughs> Now something tells and me what they, a career it was, and it still is. I think something tells me they don't do this one anymore. Might, I heard something or read something about that. Isn't Blackie some sort of born again I, guy? I believe so. And he's done. I believe Mustaine and Blackie both were doing a similar thing where they removed certain songs from yeah, their sets. Like with, the Conjuring was no. That's longer, the one. Uh, the only one I remember, yeah. but it was like talked about in many, many interviews yeah. where it would keep coming up that he didn't want to do that song because the lyrical content was talking about no. conjuring demons and something. But anyway, back to Blackie. No, no, Same thing. Yeah, I mean this. So I rem- my first Wasp song that I remember hearing, and I'm I'll come out and admit I don't know that many. Yeah, um, but yeah, I remember. I, don't I remember. I want to be somebody. Yeah, that was the big one that I remember seeing videos of and hearing. And I think, I think our older brother had. We probably still have it somewhere. The cassette of whichever album had that on it. I don't know if it's the debut. I don't think so. Hmm. I don't know, but I'm glad I get. Yeah, it I'm, is. I'm glad. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. I. What a mistake. Eat, that was their. S- Oh no! Okay, that was their first single. Sorry, I thought it was their second single after this one. Now I'm I, I'm glad in advance here that I get to use the uh, the GIF file that I made a couple weeks ago that I've been sending to you guys <laughs> with the wasp tie-in. What was the wasp tie-in with the with, the, uh, with Chris Holmes's mom? Oh staring. yeah 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 okay. I think you're talking about the Rodney Dangerfield one again. <laughs> okay. Well, that one could have worked. How does too. that work? Okay, I gotcha. Um. Oh, what the hell. All right, whatever. So, yeah, this is the first song. Same album as I want. Now, is this the album cover with the saw blade cod piece artwork? I know I've seen that. That's the uh, the single single cover. Yeah, that's right. That's what I thought. Their album cover is like a Motley Crue looking four guys with some fog, and they're wearing their leather, and there's a skull thing on the stage. Now, is it was Blackie the sole songwriter on most of this stuff? Are you able to? Do you want to say your fingertips? Because I always assumed that he was the main guy, but he is. Yeah, um, at least for both of these songs. Let me see the full track last thing here. Yeah, there's some Holmes in there. Yeah, but. But this this was a uh, cornerstone track on the uh, on the with the Tipper Gore. Uh, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> what what was the name of that list? I, or was it, I'm trying to th- think of I, what they referred to that whole. Yeah, uh, I forget uh, the PMRC. That's it. That whole PMRC list. Mm-hmm. This this was a uh, a cornerstone track on there, and I I remember the the. The rumor back in the day was that the Wasp with the periods, which is how they presented the name. I don't know if you guys have ever heard this, but it just always cracked me up. Along the lines of what Kings and Sight and Service or Knights uh-huh. and Saint and Service or Kiss. And it, for all I know, this was made up by the kid down the block, but... Um, the the rumor was that Wasp stood for we are sex perverts. So, <laughs> have you guys ever heard that? No, I, I okay. Actually, well, that I'm sure the idiot down the block just made it up and told it to me once, and I never forgot it. Andy, are you checking Wikipedia to see if you can verify that? Because I am. You check that. Okay, because I mean, I yeah, because I. I've never heard what it stood for. For all I know, it was just a marketing tool just mm-hmm. just to add more intrigue i don't mm-hmm. i mean i know there's the whatever the uh the ethnic um wasp definition 
Oh, right. But, White, uh, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant. Yeah, but as far as the band? <laughs> we are sex perverts. It's <laughs> funny. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, while you look that up, I found a correction for people who are already mad at me for making an error. So I have the version in my iTunes that we see in front of me, and this is track one. But on the original release of this album, it was dropped, not on the album. But it was not on the album? Not on the album. So they just released as a single? Really? So it was supposed to be the opening track of their 1984 debut album. 1984, I was going to ask the year. It was dropped, and then it came back on the 98 reissue. So it was just released as a single. Interesting. Well, so, and if I may real quick. The band's first single somehow so they must have just had it on so like they were they were just going for the throat yeah. huh yeah it, yeah but there was, any press and the press. record company didn't have the balls to put it on the full release and so. look at the album cover it's like a it's a tiger print athletic cup with a buzz saw coming yeah. through it and blood on the guy's yeah, hands I, yeah. i'm a little uncomfortable if i own that to be honest with you <laughs> Um, in the house, it's def- so. definitely a notorious cover. Every most people who are into this type of music were well aware of it. So take this for what you will. Wikipedia, um, it doesn't it doesn't say at least on here that it's confirmed what it stands for. Mm-hmm. One possible interpretation: White Anglo-Saxon Protestants. Oh, gee, we're really going out on a limb there. Um, now, another interpretation. The insect, <laughs> but I think this <laughs> known will, as a wasp. I think this will be of interest to Chris here, in particular. Oh God! The original U.S. release of the band's debut album, Wasp, had the words "We are sexual perverts" inscribed on both sides around the center of the label in the center. Oh, that's where it comes from. It's sexual. We perverts. are sexual perverts. Okay. Interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and say that your buddy down the street was onto something. Interesting. I wonder how uh, clearly that was printed on there, but who knows? Maybe he had to take a pencil and a piece of paper over it. <laughs> yeah. And do right. a little shading. <laughs> exactly. It was engraved into it? No. You... <laughs> well, the pencil shading. No, you like on the, on the <laughs> label, right? Because yeah. like, oh, if you'll notice on albums, sometimes there are engravings on the the, on the around what, the uh, paper. Yeah, thing. The, yeah, the one that leads the, the uh, it, area it just, that leads the needle to the end, and mm-hmm. it just says inscribed. I guess I I wanted it to say engraved. Well, you know, could be. Who we knows? can use our imaginations. I'm sure if you Google image search that you would find a picture of it i'm sure i'm not it. sure you want to I do mean, a google just... search for we are sexual <laughs> perverts have that in your history You're, yeah. you'll never uh be able to run for president with that in your uh... <laughs> damn it i was planning candidate on it. Nick, why, why candidate nick jones <laughs> revealed to have google searched we are sexual perverts <laughs> uh, i'll just say it was for research yeah the pete townsend yeah uh, exactly <laughs> Was, How did he skate? It with was that? research. Hey, some guys just you know he got by on his uh, on his resume. Didn't, didn't yeah. Bowie have some kind of thing where he just said it, it was research? Or, did he have that? Thing didn't, no, didn't he? Too? But didn't he have like uh, like Third Reich memorabilia in a suitcase at the airport or something? Oh, crazy. I'm sure of it. Yeah, and, and and he I don't know what he said, but, but the, you he's know, one of those guys that could just. But he's, that's we, not, he's, he's weird already, so he can just say. Something and everybody will believe. But that's the thing. It's like, that you know. I mean, it's a weird thing to be fascinated with, but that doesn't make you a Nazi no, or no. anything like that. And I know I mean, Lemmy. I know Lemmy had, had all that. The, yeah. yeah, war memorabilia. I mean, some people but as far have, just as, have that weird uh, fixation with that. But shit. as far as, well, I mean, this was years ago. But I mean. You're not going to get the full story. You're not going to sit and hear the whole thing. It's like, oh, he had this. Oh man, he's a terrible person. Right. Wow. That so. would be the guy down the block telling you the story. Like, yeah. and it may or may not be yeah. true, or some part of it might and, be factual. And speaking or, of just straight up scandal, everything about this album that we're reading so far is just like just as out there. Mm-hmm. Just <laughs> any. This is like a 
throwing a hail mary basically, but you're just you're just putting everything out there. Looking yeah, for a these reaction. guys pretty much pushed all the yeah, buttons just, with this. I mean, this is a notorious release and song and band, and uh, you know, notable for that. And they were big, like right off the bat, huh? Well, because of all the notoriety, I think. Yeah. So kind of like, I mean, I, I didn't. Mean, they never I, ascended to the level of a Motley or Doc, and but or it was it. Like but was, everybody knew who they were because of their. They pushed the edge so far with this stuff. Did it approach um, body count level? Of, well, I, of, of like a notorious sort of uh, backlash. Well, I, the the biggest thing was. Uh, with the PMRC mm-hmm. hearings, it was either Tipper Gore herself or some white bread senator who actually recited the name of this <laughs> song in the hearing. And, you know, that's really... They basically got all their recognition from, from the notoriety mm-hmm. of this. Not that they're a terrible band, per se, but, you know, they certainly, you know, they weren't crossing over with a home sweet home or anything like that that wasn't going to happen with these guys no hmm. they didn't have any ballads i know haven't gone not that, that i'm aware <laughs> of but none that you would have heard definitely mm-hmm. not yeah no hit ballads if they had any they were swinging a miss yeah, i i don't need no doctor would be the closest i could think of. Yeah, and that's not a ballad that's just more of right. an r&b like, kind of a yeah. you know accessible yeah, material if they did a ballad, I'm not aware of it, but I don't think Soccer Mom Radio would play a power ballad from We Are Sexual Perverts. <laughs> then again, maybe they would. I don't know. Uh-huh. And uh, I'd just like to... Well, I, I'll point it out when we get more into hearing the actual lyrics. Never mind. It's something I've talked about before and mentioned Blackie's name, but... Okay. We'll get into yeah. that. Let's, I Let's think get we started. Should, yeah. All right, guys. Without any further ado. Oh, how about some further ado? <laughs> Let's do some further ado. All right. Now, I can't think of exactly which song, but this. What year was this again? 84. 84. This sounds like a Kiss song from around 84, 85. Yeah, Animalize. Yeah, know. like like this. Yeah. It has that same sound to me. Not exact, but it's got... I mean, it's really close. And a similar guitar riff that we would have heard. Like, I can I can kind of hear Paul Stanley about to come in, you know, with some, <laughs> some high note right off the bat. Yeah, and you're also, you know, I, I think it's bringing to mind um obviously motley uh maybe it's just because of the visual image i'm making that connection but there's i'm hearing some similarities there some similarities to Dokken as well yeah mute yeah. sonically um you know the, the, the production's a little murky i think yeah um terrible snare drum sound like i've always point out that was uh, characteristic of a lot of the 80s just sounds like you know hitting a cantaloupe with a baseball bat there's no crack or definition to it it's mm-hmm. just like this big burst of percussive sound which you know doesn't add to the punchiness of it at all it just takes away from it and i don't know how far away we are from the opening lyric but if i remember correctly um, some years ago, Andy pointed out that this is among his uh, his <laughs> most all time favorite opening. Uh, oh, good! I don't know what it is. I so. would agree with that still, <laughs> just for the outlandishness and, and, and the delivery. Yeah, the combination of the yeah. two. So get ready if you don't remember it, Chris. Yeah, it's, it's so it's. I got pictures of naked ladies tacked on the bed. Is that what he says? I think or, says uh, all around. I thought it was down, uh, down on the bed. See, we all have different, different uh, analysis <laughs> well, here. High art will do that. 
This says lying on the bed. I don't know. <laughs> what he's is so instead of rose I mean, petals. I mean, this is spread all, on the bed. He's got centerfolds yeah. spread out. On this there. is this yeah. is already. I mean, this band was going like they were trying to disturb. Yeah, well, of course, maximum, and Absolutely. just the the opening lyric you get. I mean, as of now, it's kind of left to the imagination just how depraved this guy <laughs> is. That's yeah. the subject of the song, mm-hmm. and I mean, I don't even want I don't even want to speculate <laughs> on where it goes because I don't yeah. remember lyrically. But uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's pretty. It's it paints a, a fairly disturbing picture right off the bat, and and with the vocal delivery, yeah, Blackie Lawless was known for that, you know, kind of kind of shrill, evil sounding uh, vocal delivery, yeah. and the l- weird look he had, like the bat wings going on, almost Gene Simmons like, yeah. And I think he was he was playing bass at this juncture he eventually switched to rhythm guitar i didn't know that i didn't know that either i thought he was all bass no he eventually switched to rhythm guitar and Hmm. brought in a bassist so Hmm. um but yeah i mean these guys were like they took the you know when motley Crue in 85 did went theater of pain where they just softened their whole image and stuff wasp kind of took the shout at the devil vibe and took it to the next level <laughs> got pictures of naked ladies yeah, yeah they, they, i just they, love they, how excited he is about it and that's such a creep and, and it's yeah it's it's disturbing well, in so but many ways naked ladies is actually kind of a nice way to put it <laughs> that, you know? that adds to the weirdness of the choice yeah. for those words <laughs> he's actually trying to put it politely yeah or something you know. Who says and naked who is ladies? And who I used to say it all the time in reference to Playboy. You know, it makes sense there, yeah. but well, in this time of music, you don't hear it. And no, then, but it, it, it adds to the in, intrigue of it, so to speak. Well, and I'm I'm wondering what the context is. Who is he telling it to? Where is he at? Is he behind bars telling somebody? <laughs> it would make sense. It, <laughs> He's like, go in my room, gather up the pictures of naked ladies on my bed. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's ahead of his time. It almost sounds like the the opening line of a Tinder profile. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you know. Basically, uh, you're 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 going for a target demographic with that description you, in your dating <laughs> site profile. You quote wasp lyrics yeah, in your right. dating profile. <laughs> Stuff. <laughs> I don't know what he's yeah, saying. Yeah, I don't know what he's saying, it, but I'd his, like to know. But just the the delivery and the the timbre of his voice is spot on for this type of thing. Yeah. I mean, he's got in the name Blackie Lawless, <laughs> great name, hilarious. yeah. And I I'm gonna I mean he can do it. I'm not. It's nothing on his ability, but definitely the singing style and i don't know throughout the years if it's evolved or changed but it's i'm gonna just say it's like an ugly voice Mm -hmm. it's a very ugly voice it's not pleasing no here whatsoever (laughs) i mean he's hitting notes and things like that and then he's not he's like a nasty sounding creature yeah and but his speaking voice is like very like baritone and he's an articulate guy that's that that's what i was gonna actually come to uh before yes nikki six Gene Simmons, Blackie Lawless, yeah. three bass players, similar kind of looks and all that stuff, gimmicks. Mm-hmm. All three of them, you know, kind of try to portray the madman on stage and the persona. And then I always got the feeling they absolutely are getting their jollies when they sit down with an interviewer oh, yeah. who's looked at their album covers, listened to the music, looked at the videos. And then they get to be super articulate and very soft spoken, and you know, and and just the antithesis of the characters they're portray. You know that they're absolutely loving the fact of that course. they're doing and, that. And and what you, you just tap touched on something that is just what these guys are all about, and it, it it's so easy for them to do, and it's manipulate the public. Whether whether you're talking about 
Nikki Six and what we're what's what's going on lately with the whole farewell tour and stuff. It's like who who didn't know that was going to happen? And who, who, who thought, didn't know that it was going to generate all this massive yeah. publicity? It's exactly what yeah. they were going for. It's and, like, who, and who's shocked that uh, that Nikki Six made a statement a few years ago and it's com- it's not completely trustworthy? Yeah. And he's not sticking to it, you know. And you know what? Really People surprised. are still buying tickets, so you know he's just he know he knows what to do, and uh, he 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 makes no apologies for it. Everything about this band is designed to push the buttons of you know PMRC types back in the day, which again was so easy to do. Yeah, you know? Ozzy Osbourne suicide solution get the gun it's get the gun it's the, it, it, but it's the equivalent of nowadays when people all they do is read the headline they don't even read the fucking article of mm-hmm. something that's posted yeah it's like you oh there's the word suicide is in the title uh it, it must be advocating suicide no it's a, <laughs> it's a warning song about what how you kill yourself with alcohol mm-hmm. abuse but yeah. Never mind that. It just has the word in the title, and it was actually written about Ozzy, right? And it, but <laughs> so, you know, you, it, don't yeah. don't investigate further. It just got the buzzword in the headline, so that you know that's all you need. To ban it, get rid of it. You know? so, so, what lyrics did we get? Are there any? Because I, I, I'll be honest, I couldn't pick them out. Oh no, right. no. Here's what we got: I whiff that smell <laughs> and sweet convulsion. Starts a swelling inside my head. I'm making artificial lovers for free. I start to howl in heat. The way he pronounced it was heat. Uh, making artificial lovers. I don't know what that What's means that at mean? all. For free. It means he's punching holes in things. Oh, maybe. Oh, is that what he's doing? Some kind of. He's making know, some kind man. of masturbatory device. I don't know artificial I lovers i mean hole in the mattress you got a watermelon in the microwave <laughs> yeah it, it's yeah i mean this is this is like uh <laughs> this is well baloney is free so <laughs> that's true <laughs> it's cheap but it ain't for free. free yeah i mean it's so it's something that it's household items maybe he's already got lying around the house <laughs> He was watching Bob Vila and got some <laughs> got some ideas. No, I don't know if Bob Vila did that. You probably had to go to the hardware store for that stuff. But yeah, it's I mean it's it's very everything about it still we're not that far in we're not even that far in, but it's just disturbing. The this this character yeah it's I mean, absolutely a right. repulsive scary yeah, weirdo he, he's a clearly a, a extreme sexual deviant born and, bordering on criminal and yeah and you, you have to imagine it doesn't end there well no it doesn't end there we got plenty of time left so far i have no issues with this guy <laughs> no why not <laughs> it's just a normal adolescent boy what do you yeah. want it's just a boy with needs. <laughs> yeah, we, well, what, we, you know, we, we want people to not keep this stuff bottled up. All we right. wanted to talk about it. Well, here it is. Here it is. <laughs> Let's continue. There's still the presence of mind to put a hook in the chorus. I was just about to say, there's actually a hook there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, let's be repulsive. But you know what? They might play this on the radio. Yeah. So let's put a hook in there. Yeah, we need something there. For, for the fans to sing along to at the yeah. shows. So it, what is it? <laughs> Big hooks. Does it conceal your love? or what? Is it? Well, let me give you all the lyrics. He said, yeah. I moan and growl and the hunt drives me crazy. I fuck like a beast. I come round, round, I come feel your love, tie you down, 
I come steal your love. Okay. So he repeats that twice. A cr- a, it's sounding more and more criminal the farther we get. Oh, well, yeah. Steal your love is something that won't bode well for you in a court of law. <laughs> <laughs> and get that kind of sentiment will get like, you in no, some no. hot water. Look, I was stealing your love. That's what I was doing. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to get you out of any yeah, trouble. Yeah. No, but hmm. it's, you know we're we're getting into some bondage uh, activity here. Tie you down and whatnot. I have an interesting tidbit about the lyrics. <laughs> oh, I don't know if we're, if we're interested in this is yet, it, but is it from Shakespeare or something? No, but it says, according to a 1997 article that was in the reissue of the Wasp debut album, it says uh, Blackie Lawless wrote the lyrics after observing a photo of two lions mating in National Geographic magazine. Okay, that that kind of explains the title, but it doesn't. What, <laughs> That's it. Lions have pictures of naked ladies so, uh, strewn about wherever they sleep. I mean, what? It, that, that this, probably just gave they, them the title. Huh? Li- well, lions tie each other down in the jungle. How does that work? So I was going to say there are some elements that it explains, like some of the uh, howling and heat and well, hunt sure. drives them crazy. That stuff kind of makes sense. Yeah. But the picture no, doesn't I don't, make any sense. I don't sense. know about lions, but I do remember hearing. Years ago, I don't even know if it's true, but I do remember reading somewhere that sharks, uh-huh. the male will like bite onto the fin of the female so she can't get away. I wonder if you know. I wonder if he got into some kind of you know dom- animal dominant. Yeah, absolutely. Act like that, and I'd, that's what I'm almost positive that the lion's penis is barbed, and it can't be ejected until. The male does what he does, and then the barbs go back in. Does that make sense? That's it. Would it would create pain for the penis to leave <laughs> against his will? Basically, what we're saying is animals are animal sex is not pleasurable. It's, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's not consensual. No, it's not consensual. So I think that's what we're getting at. Yeah, we got to get John Legend on these animals. So <laughs> Have them clean up their hats. Can he rewrite this song? <laughs> can he can he talk to these lions and uh, that's I no, I I hadn't heard that specifically, but I mean I have heard certain things in the animal kingdom that uh yeah. It's it's not uh well, it's yeah. not necessarily a, a pretty uh experience. No, you don't, you don't want to no, yeah, there's no, you know. No tender love making in the <laughs> animal kingdom. It's all there's an en- it's all an end game. One thing, one goal in mind. Yeah, to, to procreate. You don't want to be a female animal, unless you're a praying mantis. Well, okay, I guess there are exceptions to the rule, but I just mean as far as the intercourse part of things. It seems like it's a very, I don't know, violent experience at times. So it's. Uh, I mean, if. Yeah, I guess if he was reading an article and it went into all that, it probably is perfect material for a band who wants to just go so far over the as far over the top as they possibly can. Well, it worked. Perfect I mean, subject. That's why matter. anybody ever talked about them, really. I mean, musically, if we're getting back to the sonics of it, I don't know about you, but like whenever he's singing the 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 music just gets completely washed out in the yeah, background. I, I can't even make out what's going on. And I'm not, I'm not even paying attention to anything else. Right. I don't know that I can if I tried. Yeah, but even if you were, you, it would just be a it, it's just a it's a mess behind it. You know, there's no clarity to it. What are you laughing at? Over I'm there? Laughing at it. I was looking if I was correct about lion penises, <laughs> and I found the phrase keratinized penile spines along the glands and or shafts <laughs> so there you go yeah. so so a road warrior is kind of a look down <laughs> yes. there exactly terrible okay let's continue
<laughs> I don't even know what he said. Did he say I'm a wolf in sheepskin? He did. Uh, yeah, oh my, we all know what that means. Oh so sure he's did. so he's 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 cognizant enough to wear a condom. That's another <laughs> interesting bit. That was the eighties. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm an I'm an absolute maniac. Gonna, but hold on, I don't want to get uh, mm-hmm. protect I don't, yourself. I don't want to get what's floating around out there. Mm-hmm. I'm on the prowl and I watch you closely. I lie waiting for you. I'm the wolf with the sheepskin clothing. I lick my chops and you're tasting good. <laughs> That's what that last line was. Yeah, <laughs> we're pretty solid for this type <laughs> of uh, subject matter. Mm-hmm. Uh. Awesome oh stuff. Did, yeah, give me the. Give me we those all, we all nearly I lost think. it at the word thrust. I yeah. Think. <laughs> There's a lyric, possibly a misheard lyric before then. Well, well, let me hear it. I was reading along and I think it's correct. Here's what we got. I do whatever I want to do, yeah, which goes back to last week's Lover Boy song. Yeah. He makes love to whoever he right. pleases. A similar sentiment, yep. different delivery. I'll nail your ass to the sheets. Okay, I, th- I thought he said, I'll make a mess of the sheets. That makes but, more sense than... Yeah. But it, I don't know what I'll nail you. Nail your, your ass to the sheets. <laughs> Just the ass. <laughs> <laughs> and And if... There's, I'm assuming there's a mattress under the sheets. How do you get a nail to stay in there would be my question. I don't get it. Reading too much into it, I think. It, it doesn't really make sense. So. No. no it's... A pelvic thrust and the sweat starts to sting you. I fuck like a beast. See, now, you know what? This legitimately, go back to 1984... If you were to hear this coming out of your kid's bedroom, you might need to step in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, think of it. Even now, it would be shocking, but 35 years ago, if 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 you heard this coming out of your kid's bedroom, you would be remiss if you didn't investigate further, I think. That's how over the, over the line it is. Yeah. This- and it, I was about to say in a good way. I'm not so sure, but you know, the th- the mission accomplished for these guys. They wanted to put themselves on the map by being absolutely outrageous and pushing the right buttons, and they they succeeded a hundred percent. So <laughs> pelvic thrust. So I'm I'm sitting here it. thinking of the whole. Uh, Let's get John Legend on here to retitle <laughs> this and reword this. Yes. I, I want to follow up on that uh, at some point, or hopefully the Facebook comments will erupt with, with you know, politically correct lines oh, from yeah. this song. Rewrite That's, this song. I'm hoping that, yeah, that little by little we'll all work together to make that happen. But I'm thinking, I don't know why it popped in my head, but was it the Pet Shop Boys? Who had that? Um, we ate nothing but mammals. Let's do it like they do it no. on the. Dis- Who was that? That oh, was uh, Bloodhound. Yeah. Bloodhound yeah. Gang. Okay, yeah. sorry, Pet Shop Boys. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, Bloodhound Gang had that hit, and that's 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 popping in my head as far as a uh, <laughs> a humorous, more innocent take on a the same on the similar subject matter. Yeah, uh, one my favorite lyric from that song is. We'll do it doggy style so we can both watch X Files. <laughs> I don't know why that lyric has just jumped out at me immediately, and I've always remembered that. But um, but the, the 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 song from sort of that era that I think of obviously is Nine Inch Nails. I want to fuck yeah. you like an animal. That's Was true. that closer? Is closer. That yeah. Similar sentiment, you know. But hey, it's Trent Reznor. It's alternative rock. That's acceptable, you know. Nobody's canceling was, Trent Reznor, and that was all over the radio and MTV. Yeah, yeah. nobody's canceling Trent Reznor because he's cool, you know. He's he's cool, and he's and he's got a sensitive vibe to him, though. Right. 
Oh, he's portraying a character. He doesn't really mean it. Yeah, okay. Whatever. Blackie Lawless. The cancel culture picks and chooses who it wants to obliterate. Just like anything else. It's just... What what are we what, what were we talking about? Um, uh, blanking about who we brought it brought up earlier, but it's like if you're likable, you can get away with certain shit. Oh, yeah. But if you're not, you're done. You're finished. That's it. I have to say, until the guitar solo came in, the guitar is completely indecipherable. Oh yeah, the production is horrible on this. I mean, it's just white noise. There's no definition in anything. And and Bl- Blackie's voice is basically a distorted guitar. Yeah, so it's clashing big time. Yeah, but what did you think? Did you like the solo? Not really. It was Nothing. Fine. I don't know. Yeah, I mean. Had to be I there. like the fact that this solo was over the hooky chorus uh, sort of rhythm pattern yeah. chord chord progression lends itself to some some good uh, possibilities there. But in the end, again, it's indecipherable. There's no definition to it, so it's hard to tell if it's good or not. Really, and I'm gonna go with what Andy kind of halfway said over there. It had to be there. I, yeah, it has a definite. Well, it's got to be there. That's where you and put it the was, guitar solo, and it was out pretty quickly. Quickly, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it 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 was unnecess- It was an unnecessary guitar solo. Who's who's the drummer? I mean, I mean, I know Steve Riley was in the band at one point. Uh, Frankie Benali was in Wasp for a while. Um, Hold on, let me see. Oh no, wait, I'm still looking at penile spines, or whatever <laughs> that's called. Um, God, who would it have yeah, been? Blackie used the uh, sheepskin condoms with the penile spine ribbing. <laughs> if he didn't, he should have. Yeah. They need to market that. All right, who was the the personnel on this album? It was Tony Richards. Okay, don't know Tony Richards. Who's the uh, other guitar player opposite Holmes? Randy Piper. Rowdy Randy Piper. Yeah. Don't know him either. Um but yeah, you know, this I if you if you're trying to um analyze the music itself, good luck to you cuz there's it's 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 um it's just a wash of white noise really. Yeah. Um yeah, that that's all I can really say about it. I mean, it sounds like there's some pretty cool drumming going on yeah. and some interesting things, but you just can't, you got to try and find it. And that's kind of defeats the whole purpose of it. I mean, just, who produced this album? Dude, I can tell that you up quickly. There. Um, just uh, so many eighties albums sounded like absolute dog shit. This <laughs> being one of them. Blackie Lawless and Mike Varney. Oh, Mike Varney was the shrapnel records guy who discovered all these shred guitarists. Yeah, it, it's it sounds like shit. I'd, I'd rather it have been <laughs> produced by Jim Varney. <laughs> You're gonna say that? Had to work that in there somehow. Uh, that was good. What did you guys think of the little outburst before the guitar solo? He said, "Come ride, savage seduction." Ride, ride, ride. Ha, 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 ha. Leading into yeah. the song. Yeah, who doesn't like just outbursts of, you know, 
indecipherable indecipherable uh provocative language i mean the the character that he's portraying you you would think there would be a lot of indecipherable outbursts publicly by this person not surprisingly the vocals and the lyrics are the are the selling point of this song it's all about blacky lawless there there's a there's like along the lines of what Chris was saying, there's a feel and there's a there's some evidence there that okay, these guys can play. Mm-hmm. There's some there's some musicianship there, but it's that's that's I don't know if that's the foundation or if just the the provocative you know del- the vocal and delivery and subject matter if that's the. I don't know what's what's which is the foundation and which is the uh, the topping, which is the icing on it. Well, it's it's all about the vocal. I mean, the that's, music that's is the actually focal an point. afterthought, yeah. really. Yeah, but it just seems it seems like there are a few moments where you get to okay, these guys, you know, they they are an actual band. It's not just it's not just. I mean, it doesn't sound great, but it's not just garbage with a guy. With the guy screaming the most offensive, right? Stuff but it might as of. well be because you can't make out anything that's yeah. going on, really. But they've got the kind of hooky chorus in there, so some some attention was paid to, you know, putting out something legit. But the, the production kills it. You know, yeah. it's just, you know, there were good sounding albums in the eighties, but most of the uh, albums of the hair metal variety sounded like shit. Okay, then. That's it. <clears throat> he is an animal. All right, guys. It's time to vote. Chris, do you want to vote first? Sweet Surrender Kick in the Crotch. What do you got today? Oh, man. This is not a... Uh... I could do mine if you want to think yeah, about it. Yeah, you go. I'll give it some thought. It's, here. Uh, you know... I better put on a steel toe boot, oh but I'm going to kick it square in the groin, <laughs> in the cod piece. It's a humiliating kick in the crotch! And watch and out for... Cut s- your foot in half. Watch out for sparks, yeah. Cod piece. Uh-huh. I, it's... Let's face it, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> in, okay. in every way. <laughs> <laughs> Except for a couple of drum moments, it's one of the worst songs. <laughs> it's, it's terrible. It <laughs> terrible in every way. Nick's, so, Nick's, Nick's so review. For, uh, I, I will go with because Chris was pointing out the drumming. I did notice that on a few parts, the drumming sounded pretty solid. Yeah, but, and the chorus. He's got some good, cool yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, on, there's yeah. the the chorus. They do have a hook. Yeah, I'll give you. Yeah, and uh, you know, some layered vocals to achieve that kind of a right. that hook. But but it, I mean, again, it's it's pretty awful. It, I mean, and I get it. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be offensive and all that, but it's, I don't know. I, I'm not even sure <laughs> where to begin. It's, I don't know that I was ever young enough to think that this was like a, a even like a, a cool novelty of a song. You know, like when you're younger, oh, this, oh yeah, what stuff are you saying? That's that's pretty funny man that's pretty oh that's so crazy i don't know i don't know if i was ever at the point for something like this this is just so far out there yeah no, you're there's right. no there's no humor to it if there was a, if there was a bit of humor to it somehow <clears throat> i could see oh yeah okay at a certain age i would have thought yeah that's pretty funny but this is i mean this is just brutal i'm on purpose i'm sure but yeah i just i don't know no, it's a fair assessment. It's, uh, it, yeah. <laughs> so you know, quickly, what I forgot to do earlier was tell who submitted the songs and what they had to say, or who s- submitted the song and what they had to say about it. Um, one was Jim Freeberger. 
He mm-hmm. said nothing. But thank you anyway, Jim, for AKA submitting. A.K.A. Jim Furberger. <laughs> Anytime. That's how we refer to him That's on right. the show. Then there's someone just named Taylor. Taylor says, I think this one speaks for itself, every Virgin Metal Kids anthem. But then I didn't notice further down the list, it comes up again a third time. Really? My this goodness. Is, this is from Heath McCoy. He has a lot more to say about it. Um, let's see if we can read this whole thing. Listening to some old Wasp on Apple Music the other night, looked up the lyrics. Twisted. Automatically thought of you guys, <laughs> as I could see you having fun with the tune and appreciating it. Also, Wasp doesn't get their due. Those early albums were fantastic. Interesting backstory also, as I believe Blackie Lawless has found Jesus and refuses to play this tune any longer. Love the show, fellas. Um, Oh, here we go. Two of my favorite episodes this year have been I'm the One and Up for Breakfast, the two Van Halen tracks. Made me wish somebody was giving the Pot of Thunder 1.0 treatment to the VH catalog as you did with Kiss. So, there you go. So, three times. I missed the third one. Sorry, Heath. Um, But I felt like I had to mention it. That's a new high, isn't it? It might be. Of ones that we've actually done. Yeah. Same song, three yeah. t- three submissions. And I just a band that's coming to mind that I think could have pulled this off, and they would have injected a bit of humor into it. Would have been Fear. Mm, okay. I could I could see Fear doing a song along these lines. So not the exact same song, but, but a similar. Type yeah, of, yeah, sim- yeah, like a similar subject matter because they they sure they address you know like this sort of. Uh, testosterone gone awry yeah kind of a kind of a situation i think there's satire in their stuff too. yeah like, yeah and this i'm not sure that i'm not, I'm, sure, if this is I'm just, not sure if they're going satire here and the, blackie lawless is not known for his subtlety or nuance so yeah mm-hmm. there's there's none of that no none of that detectable in this yeah like I would, one of Andy's favorite opening vocal or lyrics was this song. One of mine is, uh, and just for it, it's over the top. It's not something you should say to a woman. But there's a oh, song God. called "Honor and Obey" yeah. by Fear, and that's uh, I mean that's like that's out there. But there's a bit of satire to it, sure. And it's it's not good. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, it's terrible. But, but it's it's something that. The first time I heard it, I laughed. I, re- I remember this. I don't being think with I. You the first time you heard it in the car, and I don't you had think to I almost pull over. I don't think I could laugh at this. The you know, I'm sure I didn't the first time I heard it. <laughs> All right. Well, Chris, you want to vote? Or do you want me to vote? Uh, you can go. All right. Cut and dry. Sweet surrender. Slam dunk. <laughs> it's sweet surrender. <laughs> Hell yes. So obvious. <laughs> Such Everyone a, knew. Come such on. a clear choice. Clear choice. No problem. <laughs> well, everything Nick didn't like about it, I liked about it. But I, but I have the same. It's interesting. It's like I felt the same way you felt, but my end vote is the opposite. Like mm-hmm. it's so stupid and so over the top. Well, it, it makes me laugh. But I think for what they're trying to go for at the time, they executed it perfectly. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. for that. <laughs> it's like it's a great example of what they were trying to do I, basically it this would be like i guess you could put this in the uh what is that thing like a time capsule of what chris was saying like the I mean, music that upset parents in the 80s yeah, this would be one of them but you know what i would say to that is if if your aim is for the toilet you can sit on it and you're not gonna miss <laughs> well, that's a good quote it's quite a quite a spot-on analysis it yeah. is I'm, I'm not saying he deserves a, a Mark Twain award or anything for the lyrics no, here, but <laughs> I'm just saying it's it's exactly what they wanted to do. So he right apparently he filled the toilet to capacity <laughs> <laughs> to get a plunger out. Yeah, it was a four flusher. <laughs> this one um, ran out of paper. Oh, had to yeah. walk into the next so stall much, with so his much, pants down. So much wiping at the end. <laughs> had to knock on the stall and ask the guy next to him. Little help. Uh, yeah, I mean, see, that's that's why I'm on the fence is because 
like I said, mission accomplished for what they set out to do. So there's you get points for that, but my God, the production is just like shrieking white noise. Yeah, that's that's, like, that's that, the big downside. That's another thing that, uh, that did can't, not help it. In my I can't opinion. abide that for the sake of just being outrageous. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna kick it in the crotch. Oof! It's a humiliating kick in the crotch. Again, I was on the fence because you know they they accomplished what they set out to do, and and there is some other stuff in the catalog that I like. Wild Child is probably my favorite. Um, great chorus in that one, but um, yeah, I, I just can't abide shitty sounding recordings like that. There's it's the means were there to make a to get something that sounds decent, and I just don't understand the notion that let's let's not make it if if this is as good as they thought they could make it sound then they need to get somebody else involved because it's shit yeah it, it, it's just it, white washed out noise it, that that was i mean i know i didn't really talk much about it after i voted but the production and the sound of it played a big part in it because it sounds terrible you can't even tell what's going on. There's nothing memorable about it musically, at least after. I mean, I, if it's a song you listen to over and over and over, yeah, you're going to remember some things. Like there was a couple, there were a couple drum moments, and then there was the little like um, a Gene Simmons esque bass yeah, uh, yeah, thing yeah. during the chorus. Yeah, that's that's about it, man. There's there's there was nothing redeeming musically well, there might have been you there just might can't have been. Dis- you yeah. can't decipher it that's you know yeah so i mean if there's a crystal clear live version or something you know it might have been more to appreciate but maybe we'll be able to hear more of what's going on in the john legend version of this <laughs> but it's like but but yeah but it's like you know you compared it to kiss of this era and when kiss of that era like lick it up animal animalize i compared that a lot to uh, Judas Priest, you know. It's like listen to Point of Entry, listen to British Steel. Those albums sound great. Mm-hmm. Why can't you apply that same production approach to this? You can. You just chose not to. They had money behind them. It's Capitol Records, yeah. <clears throat> major deal. You know, I remember hearing a story one time. Henry Rollins was talking about when he was in Black Flag that they were recording one of their albums on the overnight shift at a studio. like We did that once. And it, obviously that's significantly less expensive because you're recording in the middle of the night. Right. And that when they would be leaving, Wasp was coming in. But Wasp... So I was thinking about the timing. It was in preparation for this, this debut album for Wasp. And uh, they were coming in to record their demos in the studio... <laughs> that Black Flag was recording their yeah. full album in. So there was plenty of money <laughs> yeah. for them to record a whole demo album in a major studio. Yeah. Uh, you know, just... prime time hours. And then re record it. Yeah. And this is the final product of the re record. It's so. garbage. It, I mean, it's the... just, yeah, it's, it's crap. <laughs> and and you know, I compared them to Dokken and like Tooth and Nail is a pretty good album. It was one of the few hair metal albums I actually ever owned. And, you know, George Lynch, obviously, just him, you can decipher what he's doing. He's one of the most outstanding guitarists of the era. But again, it sounds like shit, you know. It, 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 it doesn't have to. The next album, Under Lock and Key, was much better, much better produced. So hmm. it, the production kills it for me. Oh, and I looked it up because I didn't know what it was. Anybody curious, the opening lyric of honor and obey by fear is <laughs> get up and make my fucking breakfast you lazy bitch I, th- I don't think the music kicks it until the word bitch either so or no it's get <laughs> it's up and make, make. on make yeah yeah but it has a little bit of a I'm gonna try that on my wife <laughs> yeah, tomorrow yeah. morning see how that works try to, out try to me. try to throw in the leaving I style I delivery i won't too. live to see my 53rd birthday on uh, <laughs> a week from the, the day that this episode is no released. no you won't not recommended to anyone so there you have it <coughs> 
I'm sorry if you were pulling for this song to be a classic. That's just the fucking way it is. Got to deal with it. Well, like, uh, who, 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 who is the guy who said, said uh, every virgin metalhead's Al? Was it Taylor? Taylor. Yeah, those those virgin metalheads are the guys who grow up to be uh, frat boy rapists <laughs> at uh, colleges around the country. Yeah. Like, just have no idea how to go about luring a woman into the boudoir. Yeah, this isn't really a song of forcing seduction. Forcing themselves on, on women, you know. The, the whole Me Too movement is has come about because of guys who are inspired by this type of material. <laughs> it's true, you know. People listen to this shit and they take it literally. That's the know? problem if you take it literally. Yeah. Like you just thinking take... it's cool to to do shit like this. No. You know? you just... Andy and I talked about it too, like all this all this fucking edgy fantasy porno stuff that's out there it's like nobody nobody does this in real life it's all people make believe yeah you know i i don't even want to <laughs> go down say, that rabbit hole what example are you like, gonna it, give well it, our listeners are worldly people you know think about it you know who who has these fucking what are they what like the 50 shades of gray sure. what do they call that a fucking uh, it's like a seduction room yeah, or some, like uh, a dungeon, dungeon or you know, where you've got all these apparatus. Nobody has that. And anybody who does is going to be ended up in jail in about <laughs> six months. <laughs> yeah. And the first time a woman sees that, she can go running for the door <laughs> as fast as she can. Like, I mean, oh, nobody, what is this? What do you want? your man that? cave? No, that's <laughs> my dungeon. Yeah, nobody what are, wants what are you, that, a dentist? You know? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Dentist. I uh, use these items for pleasure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Excuse myself. I have to take a call. Uh, you know what would go good right here? Some commercials. What do you think, guys? I'm like, Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they'd be... Like maybe whoever two. it is, I'm sure they're glad they're on this episode. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Selling a lot of Geico insurance <laughs> with this material. Life insurance yeah. after hearing yeah. this one, yeah. yeah. Before you fuck like a beast, stop by Dunkin' for their holiday <laughs> Dunkachino. Get a box of Joe. <laughs> <laughs> a box of Joe and then stop over at Target for some forceps. <laughs> Took us one week to ruin everything. <laughs> hey, whatever. It was a failed experiment. Who, again, who, who didn't know it would end up this way? You know, yeah. it's kind of like the Motley Crew reunion. Who, who didn't know we would go down in flames with the ad ad model? I mean, nobody nobody wants to be associated with this. Yeah. Just the title of this episode is going to get us kicked off of that platform. Hey, we tried something different, you know. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. We probably we have to censor the title, huh? Well, I'm going to have to use an asterisk. And I, I think know. technically that's how it's published. Uh, yeah, it probably is, actually. <laughs> what I can't wait to see, I really can't wait to see what happens. That's F, asterisk, asterisk, K. Two of them. Okay, well, I'm going out of they published it, so yeah. they'll still get us thrown off of the advertising. <laughs> yeah, they're going to hate us. Yeah. A pot of Thunder's advertisers have pulled out from the remainder of the run. Just pot can't be associated with these guys. Pot of Thunder issues apology. <laughs> Blackie Lawless got us in trouble somehow 35 years <laughs> later. <laughs> See, he doesn't play it though. He's washed his hands of it. That's true. Can't blame can't blame him now. Hey, so last week didn't we have a rule that we came up with that we were going to read the latest one, the latest Yardo question? Did we? That's what Andy said. Yeah, that's fine. I we guess. were trying an experiment. You don't want to be like Nikki said. Oh, that's right. Okay, I remember that. So we got one during the show. 
Wow. So I'm going to read that one. Doesn't get any fresher than that. Mm, no. As fresh as a plant-based breakfast sandwich <laughs> from Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> You see those? No. The fucking the egg is just pure white. It's like who would eat that? It's so horrible. Oh my god, man! <laughs> Down the street from a Guitar Center when I worked there was what the, are you doing? Was, was was the pumpkin donuts? Uh, well, it's already gone, Andy. Okay. It's, why, why pretend Fine. at this point? Fine. Who cares? But the uh, when I worked at Guitar Center, mm-hmm. right at the corner of Belmont and Clark, was the Punkin' Donuts, that Dunkin' Donuts yeah, where yeah. all the punk rock kids hung out. Yeah. And, of course, every other shift, half of the crew was just... Was was just devastatingly hungover. And you go sure. down for those uh, croissant uh, breakfast sandwiches that they they'd whip up the egg in that plastic thing and put it in the microwave. And they, oh my god! <laughs> it's just ingesting those things is just as bad as all the liquor that was consumed uh, leading up to it. <laughs> But hey, the coffee's great. I'm hey. a big fan of the coffee. Well, maybe, maybe I drink uh, it every day. Maybe Tim every Horton. day. Maybe Tim Hortons Almost. is this week's sponsor, and we're all good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this week's this, this week's Yardo questions comes to us from <laughs> from the CEO of Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> yeah. so questions please one call. Through, questions one through three says, "What is wrong with you?" <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Who, who again? Who didn't think this was going to happen? <coughs> so this comes to us from Doc Curry. Ooh, interesting here. So I've seen this uh, come up on several yards of questions, and I almost always skip it because I think we talked about skipping this before, or we maybe we dealt with it, but because of the rule, we're locked in. Yep, we're locked in. Got to do it. Question one. Marry, fuck, kill game. You marry one, you fuck one like a beast, you kill one. I added like a beast. All right. Wait, what? <laughs> I don't this know is, what this is. I, do, I don't even know if I want to know what it is. What? What is it? So you've heard of this game where you I've name... I've not th- heard okay. of this. You name three people, and then you have to choose what you'd like. You have to give each one of them... A, t- a title or whatever. So you marry one, you fuck one, you kill one. So I don't know why kill. See, the thing that always rubs yeah, me wrong about yeah. this is that it's kill. Like I get the idea of marry one, fuck one. Pardon my. Fr- oh my! I can't believe I'm saying such vile words on this Dunkin' Donuts podcast with your Arby's cup right next to you. This week's show is brought to us by Arby's. Now Arby's would not care. <laughs> No. <laughs> Arby's would be all over this. Arby's would make... Uh, Give us a call, Arby's. Arby's would draw Blackie's cod piece out of Arby sauce and post it on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> they don't give a damn at Arby's. No. No, they're... That should be their... <laughs> <laughs> exactly the way you worded it. That should be their... <laughs> their slogan. We don't no, give it should be damn. They, <laughs> they don't give a damn at Arby's. <laughs> Could you imagine that on a cup? (laughs) (laughs) Or just the the parlance of our times, just zero fucks given would be the tagline. Uh, On a billboard. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, Well, you're welcome, Arby's. Yeah. Here we go. So here are the three choices, guys. Oprah Winfrey... (laughs) All oh, three. Good. All three. I, okay, I'm done. I actually feel better that the choices are being provided. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I can work with that. Yes, yes. Because I was about ready to punt in that one. No, no, no. There's three choices. Okay. Oprah Winfrey, Hillary Clinton, Jane Fonda. Okay. Uh, this is easy for me. Um, you marry Oprah because you tap into that cash. The billionaire. Yeah. So that's a that's a no brainer. Why hasn't Stedman uh, done this? Because he's gay. Oh, okay. What about Everybody Oprah? Everybody knows that. What? She is too. <laughs> yeah, she is too. <laughs> who's who's her? Uh, what's her best friend? Who's on the team? Her 
<laughs> the one who interviewed Her butt uh, best friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't, is that is the it, one from the R. Kelly yeah, interview? Yeah, yeah. Well, who is that? What, I know who you're talking about. I'm blanking on her name. Talk about... Gail? Ma- yeah, that's Talk it. about manipulation. Oh, well, this is all hearsay, that. ladies and gentlemen. But no, talk it's about not. that. <laughs> that Her reaction in that interview? It's actually not hearsay. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fact. Wow. Again, wake up and smell the... the Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> coffee. <laughs> Delicious stuff. Okay, Mary Oprah, because you get you you tapped into that cash. Yeah. Uh, fuck Jane Fonda because yeah. she's still hot and she was always hot, especially during the aerobics era. Yeah. And then you leave the last one. I'm not even going to say it, but uh, yeah, you know, this is an yeah. open. This was an open and shut case. Put it to you, right. Put it to you this way: there, there's no benefit from either marrying or fucking Hillary Clinton <laughs> at this stage. So. so if the third choice is I mean, what it, it is, given, and I'm assuming Nick will echo that, it's it's the only answer you can get. That, he kind of made it too obvious, I think. Well, right when you said Oprah, I said all three. <laughs> But I was going in that to- order. <laughs> oh. I, I'm not, I, <clears throat> I'll say I'll say um, Chris has the the sen- the mo- he threw out the most sensible uh, answers. Um, I will say Cat Baloo that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That that would that would uh, that he, he Chris said the aerobics era. Yeah, you would go before that. To Cat Baloo. Like to Cat Baloo. Well, you, you, I did say she is always hot. Yeah. So, but I, I just, I prefer the, you know, the eighties, uh, you know, uh, the whole aerobics thing. You know, what a body on that woman. She's still. Plus, you know, she had a majestic bush back in those <laughs> days. Just packed into that leotard. She's still getting arrested and stuff. Yeah, She's making, yeah. still making headlines her for and, protesting. Her and the farmer from Babe are still getting arrested <laughs> protesting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's like, just let that rest. Don't you have anything better to do? Can, can you think of anything worse to have happened to you in your golden years than to get arrested for Sounds any terrible. reason? Just go away. Live your life in quiet solitude seclusion especially if you have the means to do so yeah getting arrested fucking rear-ending someone at the emissions uh oh testing God. thing you saw that thing too? no you told oh, me i told you yeah, yeah, yeah i'm sorry 88 year old man driving get the fuck out of here yeah i forgot i told Jesus. you this lock him up <laughs> <laughs> hurry up all right question two who is more ridiculous? Ingve Malmstein, Vinnie Vincent, Michael Angelo Batio. Um, who takes the cake? You know, this is not as easy as it seemed as you were reading it. Um, are we just I guess it's our own interpretation of ridiculous in, yeah. in what way? Yeah. Um, you'd have to go Vinnie Vincent, I would think. Um, just overall, because there's so, there's a because, lot of mystique because with because the character the person because Ingve and Michelangelo are out there performing, mm-hmm. yeah, and and it just seems to be some ridiculous thing with Vinny Vincent where he will not perform, he can't get it together. I mean, he did allegedly perform for a small group of people but it's i that's the thing to me is there's something going on that i find ridiculous that there's no hint of new music there's no performance going on there's no i i don't it's there's, just, bri- there's a lot of bridge burning yeah and i mean yeah. and then there's there's his there's his look and his playing which yeah. which can certainly get sure. ridiculous throughout all the years so and all that is valid, but for me, the the hands down winner is Babio. For the for the for the sole reason, well, the main reason is that uh, unlike Ingve and Vinnie Vincent, he has never put out a single piece of music with substance. 
mm. in his entire career. I mean, Vinny Vincent has played on some good shit. He's written and Ingve played Ingve Malmsteen stuff, yeah. is a fucking god. And, you know, his his persona is backed up with just virtuosity from a musical standpoint. Batio is just a jackass. <laughs> and again, he's, he's... Name one, like song of substance he's ever participated in, you'll be wrong if you attempt to do so. It's a joke. He's an idiot. <laughs> well, from a musical standpoint, yeah, I would agree. Yeah, but just what, what, what has he done of substance? Nitro. Get out of here. What a dickhead. I can't wait till Nitro pops up on this show. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Alright, question three. If you could wipe one band off the earth, erase every memory of them, gone, never existed, <clears throat> who would it be? And before you answer, I love the show. Good to see the fully erect set of boners back for season two. I plan to make the titty sauce for my unsuspecting mm. family for Thanksgiving. That's that's Hot uh, Nation forever. Yeah. Thanks. I forgot that Thanksgiving's this week. Yeah. Yeah, man. Get it your really cherry is. extract. Yeah. Where do you, you have to go to Menards to get it? That's, right? uh, that's where I found it. Well, maybe they're the sponsor this week. Yeah, that would be good. Come get your titty sauce at Menards. Yeah. Well, we'll be losing them too. <clears throat> so get your uh, titty sauce and your complete "What's Happening" uh, <laughs> series on DVD. Yeah. So who? What? I'm. I'm thinking in my head what band Chris might say that he wants to wipe I mean, there's some obvious ones. I don't know if I want to do the obvious or try to come up with something else. I'll throw one out there that I was I was just watching something from the 80s on YouTube earlier, and there was a commercial that was from the time, like mm-hmm. 87 or something, and it was for uh, some kind of a performance, like a, a musical you know, I, don't, I don't know if it was an award show or something, and yeah. this band was on there, and that's why they're fresh in my head. I've never liked. There's maybe one guitar riff that I like, but I can get I can sacrifice that to get rid of you two. Oh, wow! Just wipe them off. Wow! The plane. Never, n- almost nothing by them has ever connected with me. I'm down with that. Another one, and I don't. I, I'm hey. If I'm already putting myself out there, I'll. I, I don't know enough of his catalog, but a lot of the Springsteen stuff makes me wanna oh almost boy, wanna just, say him. But I didn't. Troyan's head. I explode. didn't. I didn't say it because <laughs> I. I am not as. I have not heard as much. Of, I. Everybody always says his early stuff is brilliant songwriting, and it might be. Yeah. I didn't go with him, uh, he, but he's another one who nothing I've ever heard has really connected with me. I'm going to go you two. You know, both those acts you've mentioned, that between the two of them, I've owned one release from the from either of them. At one point, I bought the cassette of Under a Blood Red, Blood Red Sky, the live album they put out mm-hmm. um, uh, early in their career. But I don't know. I, I can respect both. I mean, they've, they've both have bands have put out uh, dozens of undeniable generational anthems from my perspective. So, uh, you know, I tried to think of something. I'm just going to go with my go-to. But I'm going to single out this individual, Jeff Lynn. <laughs> Fuck ELO. Fuck the traveling Wilburys, fuck all of this producing that ruined some otherwise good albums. Had he never existed, the, the rock landscape would have been much, much better. The guy just his only talent is latching on to musical icons and 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 masquerading as one himself by association. A complete dickhead. <laughs> All right. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to Doc Curry for your Yardo questions. Enjoy that titty sauce. Do they make it just like it's just cherry extract, or they have like bottled titty sauce? Larry the Cable Guy's titty sauce or something? <laughs> Guy Fieri's yeah. titty sauce. Right. 
Nick, you might want to get in on that. That's not a bad titty idea. Sauce guy. I mean, hey, like, um, you know, like Chris was saying, go ahead, be outlandish. Zero F's given. Just yeah. call it that. Put it on the shelf. Yeah. Who cares at this point, right? You could be the blackie lawless of, uh, <laughs> I don't know, of- fruit extract. <laughs> It'd probably go in the in the olive oil or salad dressing area. Yeah, <laughs> somewhere in between there. Huh. Yeah, you have Ken's Thousand <laughs> Island, Nick's Titty Sauce, <laughs> side by side on the shelves. <laughs> <laughs> now I alluded to this earlier. A week from today is my birthday. Damn, December second, turning fifty three. You can fade out with this music. Okay. Shit. Sure. <laughs> um, so, there has been one other time during the run of this podcast where we released an episode on my birthday, and I believe that was the one where I gamed the system and had it pull out Come On and Love mm-hmm. Me, yes. my favorite Kiss song. That's right. Uh, we've got, in the words of... Uh, Paul Stanley, we've got something special and spectacular planned for Monday, and that ain't no joke. That's true. The shit we have in the works <laughs> will change everything. <laughs> and at, we're, I'm, I don't feel like I'm exaggerating, unless we just completely come up short in the execution of what we have planned. It, 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 it's going to be probably... It, I, I, I don't see how it can't be the best episode ever. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. We've got it set up. It's ours. We know what we're going to do, mm-hmm. and you will find out on my 53rd birthday on December 2nd. It's ours to blow. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's, it's it, we don't we don't rehearse this thing, um, you know, it's it's the onus is on us to execute the concept. And if we do that, up to this level of the standard of the concept, it's gonna it's gonna be incredible. <laughs> do you do? You I agree. I agree, hundred percent. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it, we, we've done a little, you know, you know, set things up and a, a, a little bit of preparation. I mean, it's just it, it's all the all, all the tea leaves are lining up for this thing to be <laughs> just incredible. So. Yeah. So there you go, seven days away from right now. Count down the days on your calendar till the greatest episode of Pot of Thunder. Wow. Almost seven years in, six and a half years in, or whatever it is, a little more than that. Still putting out good stuff. The best episode that far in. How about that? As long as we don't blow it, as long as we don't ruin it, it's going to be the Chris L birthday spectacular is going to be exactly that <laughs> yeah now, now i have more ideas in my head i i have none so oh I'm, good i'm looking i'm looking forward to it anyway <laughs> even though i have much much less certainty than you, just, you guys do you just experience <clears throat> it and react that's all i'm gonna do that's all we need out of you perfect all right well until next week that's gonna do it for today